So we're going to look here at what happens when we import a pre-7.0 config into the 7.0 system. Now the first thing that we want to note is that in previous versions, the config XML contained everything. It had our assembly lines, our component libraries, it had includes, properties. In 7.0, this is all, these are all stored as individual files following the Eclipse project model. Now the 7.0 server still needs a config file to run our solution. We have a project wrapper which is going to then point to all of the various bits and pieces that make up this one solution. And that's exported as a config whenever we save the project or we run it. The config is named after the project and it's stored in the, the TDI solution directory subfolder workspace. Then it'll be the name of the project and finally runtime dash name of the project. We'll look at this in just a moment. This is a folder which now is available as a substitution token. So you can use this when building paths so that way you keep the files that are, that are config are dependent on close to the config itself, making it easier to, to handle these, to back them up, and to move them around. And finally, when we migrate a config, we can either create a new project or we can import these into an existing project. Of course, you can also copy and paste, drag and drop between projects, and you can include references to other configs. So here I have a config that I'm going to import. You can see that I've got assembly lines as well as library components. These will be called resources in 7.0. And I've got a, a custom property store. Now it's important to note here that when I import this, I'm going to, it's going to break apart my single config into individual files, but it's going to put a project wrapper around it that binds it all together into one solution. The name of that project will automatically also be the name of a default or a, uh, an automatically created custom property store for us. So I need to make sure that the name of this property that I'm using or that I'm importing is not the same as the name of the project that I'm going to import it as. Let's go to 7.0 and from here I can either go to the file import selection or I have this available also in the welcome screen. So first I'll choose the file that I'm going to import and that'll be my notes integration and you'll notice here this is how I did my source management in previous versions. I just did a file save as and appended a date so I could go back to previous versions. This is not necessary anymore with 7.0. The way that the config or the solution is stored now enables me to tie this into CVS or some other source management tool, making this a much better team development tool as well. Plus the fact that Eclipse already has a revision history built in, so I can go back to previous versions or recover deleted items. Now once I've selected the file, TDI then lets me choose which parts of the solution I want to bring in. I'm going to just select everything. And we'll call this project Notes Integration. Once the import is completed, we are back here in the workbench with our notes integration project. Here are my assembly lines, and here are the various library objects under resources. This is the default custom property store that I get. If we take a look at the path to this collection, you can see that it's using what we used to call a TDI expression. This is now called text with substitution. And if we go in here, there is a new substitution token. There's actually a few, but this one gives me the directory where the config is loaded from. And this is going to be the runtime minus and then the name of the project. This is actually a good idea because it keeps all the files that a config are dependent on in tight orbit around the config itself. I've also got my notes in int properties imported, and this one's still getting it from the same place. So I might, might want to change this to use text with substitution, and then use this config dollar directory slash, and then the name of my properties file. But I'm going to leave that as an exercise here for the viewer. If we go up also, I want to show you another thing, and that is that the notes connector, and this is for all of you uh, notes domino users out there, 
The notes connector now supports doing a connect next and browsing data even in local client mode. So now I can connect and start stepping through the data. Okay, let's take a look on disk to see how this is actually stored. It's going to have the same, really the same organization that I see here in my project. So if I go to my workspace, I now have a notes integration. We still have a solution directory, and the solution directory is still going to be the relative path or the, the route for any relative paths that you use in your config. So under notes integration, I have my assembly lines. These are individual files that I can now uh, take and just drag into other projects if I want to. I have my references. This is imports. So if I wanted to import or use the assets, assembly lines and components in a different config, even a previous version, I set that up here in references. And that concludes this video on importing configs from previous versions into TDI 7.